Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is day two of the August Nico Dairy Challenge. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about today's problem. Uh, cave smorters element in sorted matrix. Oh, let me see if I get an extra. Hmm. So there's this thing that I don't know if you've seen me done on the last couple of videos is that sometimes on a contest page, uh, maybe it's just explore or contest sometimes, though this is not loading for me right now, but uh, there's like a button that you can get for 10 coins. Um, yeah, always like more coins. But anyway, all right, maybe I'll come back to this because for some reason it's not. Oh, there we go. Oh, there you go. See, feel unlucky. See this thing on the upper left? Uh, let me make sure that. I, yeah, uh, if you click on it, it goes, congratulations, you get 10 points or 10 coins. Uh, so yeah, so that's what I've been doing in case you're wondering. Uh, so good luck to y'all if you're doing that. Anyway, today's problem is cave smallest element in sorted matrix. Um, okay, so the cave smallest element in the sorted order, not the cave distinct element. Okay, n by m mate or n by n matrix. Okay, so they could do. Da, 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 da. Uh, and then we turn the cave smallest matrix. Okay, so what what is there going on? Okay, each of the rows and the columns are sorted, right? Okay, so then here. We're trying to figure out if we could do it in O of n time. Uh, apparently, that's like really hard. So, uh, so we're not going to do that. But didn't we have a similar problem recently? Or, or oh, it's not the distinct answer because I think we had a similar one, but maybe it was not. I think it was unique, or something like that. Or yeah, all the elements are unique, so this one's not unique, I suppose. Um, okay, so then here, what are we trying to do, right? Let's say we have this matrix and we're trying to get eight, eighth smallest. Mm. Mm. Okay, so I mean, that means that we're trying to find a number where, uh, yeah, we're trying to do better than n square, obviously, but. Mm. And we there are a couple of ways you can do it, right? So the naive one would be to test an answer, right? And and I don't know if this is a good enough answer, to be honest, but um, but a, a one way that we can do is just binary search. And the way that we can do binary search is just by looking at each row and then do a log n search to see, okay, uh, meaning that binary search on the answer, right? And what we would try to do maybe is just like, okay, we'll try to see if six is the answer. Oops, did I click on? We'll try to, what the hell did I click on? Um, anyway, six is the, see if six is the answer, right? And six, we go, okay, this is bigger than two numbers, zero numbers, zero numbers. And then that means that six is bigger than two numbers, right? And then you kind of repeat that, you know, just in a binary search kind of way. And of course, each loop or each iteration can be n log n. And because we're doing um, log of, n square element or something like this um or maybe just log of 10 to the 9 um then it's going to be um that's going to be n uh, uh, uh that's going to be n log square n in the worst case of course you could say that you could do a log on 10 to the 9 but of course a little bit hand wavy here is that you can also re-index the things so that the bounds are going to be from 0 to n square Something like this, and then you do you know, you do a search on over, over um, n squared distinct elements anyway, right? Um, possible elements, and of course, log of n squared is going to be log n over log n. So that's how you get to n log square n, right? Um, can we do better? Well, n log square n is probably okay. What is so n is three hundred uh, log log of n is. What uh, what's ten to the oh it's two to the uh two to the ten is one thousand so that's gonna be even yeah two to the nine or something uh two to the nine so then two to the so that means that log n is nine uh ish off my head so I'm a little bit off maybe um was two to the a is two fifty six right anyway um so then it's nine times nine times three hundred for log square or n log square n. So I think that would be good enough for me to do. Uh, yeah, I mean. Yeah. 
Now I'm gonna think whether Yeah. I mean, there are, of course, other ways of doing it, but I think that's going to be, I think that's what I'm going to try to do. Uh, yeah, let's do it that way. Okay. I'm just trying to think whether to, well, to be honest, I, I kind of was like, eh, I mean, seeing this, I'm like, eh, maybe it's okay. Let me just take a look anyway. Okay. Not secure because... Man, this is going to be a virus. PDF virus. Hmm. Our quick selection, maybe. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, not going to. We'll, we'll spend energy elsewhere today. Um, okay. So, yeah. Let's, uh, let's kind of think about this. What am I thinking about? Um... Let's go. Okay, yeah, yeah. So then now we go, uh, let's just say, uh, yeah, left, right is the way that I always write it. I really need to get, um, uh, left is actually negative infinity, uh, or not negative infinity, but the negative bound, which is, um, I, I think in theory we want to do like, you know, the min of the matrix or something like that, but that already makes it n squared because you have to look at every, oh, wait, no. Actually, the smallest element is going to be upper left, and the big, biggest element is upper right, or bottom right, so I think that's good. Okay, fine. So the smallest element is this, and then the biggest element is going to be this, right? And then now, uh, this is inclusive, of course. I need to, really need to do my binary search video. I haven't recorded, but I have to cut it a little bit to make it tighter. Um, but uh, maybe I should just release it, because uh, I'm letting the perfect getting the way of good but yeah but then now okay so what so if mm, good of mid okay what does good mean i suppose now we have to write the good function right so what does good function do right so let's say we have some number target and then we're gonna return the, the uh okay um does this number target have exactly or uh, have at least k um k numbers smaller k minus one number smaller uh k minus one numbers smaller smaller smarter <laughs> smaller uh, k minus smaller numbers um that's basically the idea right um yeah i think that's fine and then in this case what does that mean if it does have it then we then this is a good number um, and, but we want to make, try a smaller number. Otherwise, we have to try a bigger number. Um, so yeah, so that's basically how I'm going to structure it. Hopefully, this makes sense. I, I kind of went really fast there. But basically, the idea here is, uh, yeah, I, I would, mm, um, yeah. The, here, the idea here is that if there k minus one smaller numbers, then this is a good. Uh, mid is a possible answer, and so but we want to try smaller, so we cut off the right side by making right the mid, and because mid is a possible number, we want to set to mid. Otherwise, we do this thing, and of course, this is an inclusive bound, so it allows me to kind of think about the boundaries in a more consistent way. And usually, I draw it out, but today maybe I'm a little bit hmm, lazy or something. Uh, okay, so yeah, so here, of course. One way you can do it is by, you know, do a linear scan, but that's going to be n square. What we are doing, it's going to be n log n instead to call, right? And why is it n log n? Because for each row, um, something like this, we go, okay, so count is equal to zero. And then now we want to see how many numbers are exactly smaller than this, right? So we do that by doing a bisect left, I think, on the row on the target and then because that is the the index which you, which you insert um the number that is strictly smaller um wait maybe this is a little bit off because i think in this case the smallest number where it is oh i think we want exactly k actually 
No, wait. It's because this is one indexed, right? If it was a single index, it would be k. But we want k minus one smaller number. But then in this case, we actually want the biggest number where this is the case, right? So this is the part where it's very easy to mess up with one by one. So I'm trying to work this way precisely such that it gives us the answer. So give me a second. So we have k because basically now we want to. Hmm. Because if it is the same, um, because if it's not distinct, we have to be careful. If it's not this, we want the smallest, no, we want the biggest number such that, uh, how do I handle the, the unique or the non-unique cases? Let me think. I think maybe this is, or th this is phrased correctly, but I think this is not quite right as a result. Um, okay, so let's say we want exact, no, we want, Uh, and the reason why this is an issue is because we're, we're considering numbers that are not in the array. Um, so basically, why, why I'm going through this is, let's say you have, um, I mean, and here, let's just, you know, make it into one matrix. But let's say you have one, three, three, uh, 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 maybe you have something like this, right? Um, and let's say you're trying to find the third number. Um, in this case, the number three is has two smaller numbers. But then, but it's not in the way, so the answer is actually four, right? Um, so that's basically what I'm trying to think about. How what, what's the clean way to do it? Um, and this is something that sometimes I'm, you know, you 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 just at least for me, I go on autopilot because I solved it a lot. But this is clearly wrong, right? And but if you want to say what's the biggest number, which is this is the case, maybe that's fine because four, then yeah. Okay, but then in that case, how do we phrase it, right? That means that if this is good, then we... Do. So then here we want at most k minus 1, and then here we, we change the definition as well, right? Um, because now, if it has k minus one smaller numbers or fewer, then we want a bigger number. So then here, left is equal to mid, where this is mid equals to true, and then right is equal to mid minus one, and then we do a plus one here, and then we do something like this. Yeah, and then we return count is less than or equal to k, or minus one. Maybe this is, I think this is, roughly right i'm just going to give it a spin to kind of um uh, yeah uh, okay so that looks good but you can see that like this is very easy to get wrong because if i had the number that i had before like i said it would return three because three is the next the smallest number which has at least k minus one but obviously it's phrased in a way such that i eliminate the force and of course if you are not tight about it and you just like do an add one or something then you're like okay well the number four or like ye close or something like this well the number four doesn't really like you know like it number four could have is technically like seven numbers that are equal or smaller right so that's why we're trying to be careful here so let me give a submit um and then we'll see how that goes me okay cool how did i do it a year ago well i did it with a heap hmm Oh, I guess this is a good one too. I'm curious about the complexity. Um, because basically you're going, uh, I see, that, that's another way to do it, uh, which is that you start a corner, and that means that this is the smallest number. And, that, and then next, you know that the next smallest number has to be one of these one. And then if it's this one, then it has to be a number that's next to it. Um, or it's a candidate, right? So you have this like frontier almost. That makes sense. I like that I practiced this a different way today, but I think that one is actually probably less error prone as you can see what I did here. Um, again, so this one is going to be O of the R where 
all is like 10 to the 9 or something like that times 2 because um, because it goes to negative as well uh, n number of number of iterations and then we and each of this uh, it's going to be O of n times log n so this is going to be n log n and of course there is a, like I said there's an optimizations here that maybe if you pre-process in a good way but but of course you can't really pre-process without r square or n square sorry so yeah but otherwise it's going to be O of n log n times log r is the idea and space is just O of 1 so yeah which is I think that I saw something about O of 1 here yeah constant memory so yeah um cool that's pretty much all I have for this one let me know what you think uh I'm gonna do a bonus problem in another video today so if you want to if you found this one easy or if you just want to do a bonus one um come do it with me so we can all do it together even though you know you do it for learning sake anyway that's all I have uh stay good stay healthy to good mental health I'll see y'all later and take care bye bye